right, hello everybody. Welcome to another DC Cap E sessions. Uh, this is our monthly event series where we feature success stories and partner insights into strategy and growth in e-commerce. My name is Catherine and I work with the marketing team and the partner manager at DC Cap. Um, today we're going to be featuring some special guests. Uh, we're going to have Scoge speaking about their company's journey into B2B. <clears throat> we'll have Dev Digital speaking about five marketing channels you need to prioritize as well as DC Cap's own uh, Sivar and Johnny speaking about quality assurance and ADA compliance and how that plays into design. And we're very excited by the great tips and insights they'll be sharing here today. Along with that digital, DC Cap is privileged to be a partner with Scoach on their digital journey. And you can also watch more of our e-sessions on our DC Cap events page. Um, and also please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're always up by uploading videos like this to our channel. And of course, we'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Scoach and Doc Digital in particular for sponsoring the event with us. Um, and partners like them certainly help make it possible to host these educational sessions each month. And you can find out more about them at scoach.com and .digital.com, as well as us at dccap.com. All right, well, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and start by bringing up our first presenter. Uh, Michael from Scosche. Michael has over 25 years of experience in high tech and he is responsible for information technology and digital strategy at Scosche. He oversees business applications, hardware infrastructure, data and security. He holds a master's degree in computer management from University of Pune. He is the architect of both B2B and B2C e-commerce implementations at Scosche. And welcome Michael, thank you for joining us. Please take it away whenever you're ready. So good morning everyone. Um... Thanks for joining the, the e-session today. I'm going to talk about our B2B experience um, that we, uh, you know, the, the B2B portal that we launched uh, six months ago. So before that, I just wanted to talk about um, uh, Scosche. Um, Scosche has been in the industry for almost 41 years. Um, we launched uh, um, the company in 1980. Um, um, we've been, um, we've been, um, um, uh, we've been working with um, um, pretty much most of the retailers in the industry. We have 200 employees. Um, we work with almost 4,000 4, SKUs. Uh, we have five office locations in the U.S. Our headquarters is in California, Oxnard, California. We've got numerous awards um, uh, and also hold more than like 400 patents and trademarks. Um, we, our products are sold in like almost 50 plus countries. We are the number one mount brand in the US, USA and Canada, and the number one brand, mobile accessories brand in, in Canada. Back in, back in 19, um, so 2019, uh, when we went to a conference, we met a lot of our customers from a small customer group. So they mentioned that you know, like they could do more business with us if we had an online portal. And at that point, we were getting all the PPOs, the purchase orders through emails and phone calls. Um, so somebody has to manually enter that into the ERP system uh, for the, the fulfillment uh, part. So at, at, at that time, we were actually migrating from our um, M1 to M Magento 2. Our e-commerce platform, B2C platform was running on uh, Magento platform M1 at that point. So we were just actually migrating the platform to M2. Um, so right after we launched uh, M2, uh, our strategy was to move to a uh, dealer portal. Like, so implement dealer portal for that particular uh, customer group. Um, so we, um, well, we launched the site in um, September 2020 last year, six months ago. Um, and that's again, part of our digital strategy to move a lot of our customers to the portal, um, especially when we are dealing with the major retailers, uh, their POs are coming through EDI and they didn't have to have a, a B2B portal, but rest of the customer base, we wanted to have uh, a portal where they can log in and then buy, uh, buy products from us. So we spent a lot of time talking with our customers um, and wanted to learn from them. And uh, so before we finalizing the features, and also the user experience, we wanted to spend time with customers and understand their needs. Um, so one of the things that they wanted to have was the search uh, functionality. 
say they wanted to have a, a powerful search to find the products quickly. Um, and also, um, um, you know, we wanted to, we wanted to make sure like, you know, the product um, products are up to date on the catalog. So we, we uh, in the last 18 months, we launched about like 270 products. Um, so we wanted to make sure like um, the products um, offering, product offerings are up to date on the product catalog. Um, also, they wanted to see the inventory availability. Like, you know, we ship from two different sites. So they wanted to see whether the products are available from the closest location that they are, uh, they are, uh, they are in. Um, shipment tracking was another important component for them. So they wanted to see the estimated uh, delivery and then text notification. So even though this is a B2B site, they, they wanted to have the kind of a B2B, B2C experience uh, to some aspect, you know, like when, when they deal with the website, especially they don't, they don't want it, they are much familiar with the products. They don't have enough uh, time to navigate the site. Um, they wanted to be quick and uh, be done with the, with the purchasing. Um, so we have to balance between the B2C and B2B site kind of experience, uh, but text notification and estimated delivery are critical for them. Chatting with customer support is another component they wanted to have, wanted to have that on the site. So their questions will be answered right away. Um, the one other aspect they wanted to have on the site was without talking to a salesperson, they, they would like to see the volume discount if, um, um, if, uh, if uh, the order amount was larger. larger. So we, we provide like a certain percentage of discount if they meet a threshold. So, so that's actually built into the, the process. So they don't have to talk to anyone. Um, faster checkout. So they wanted to have um, uh, a faster checkout with the site. So we added a quick order widget on the site. So they, they have the option to reorder from the site um, with, uh, with, from the past, past history. So they have the option to uh, maintain multiple requisition lists, their daily list, their weekly and monthly list uh, to, um, to make the purchase easier and faster. And we also gave them an Excel import where they can um, have the, as long as they know the SKU and uh, the quantity that they wanted to order, they can easily um, import a spreadsheet um, to add those items to the cart without going through the product detail pages. And um, back orders are important for them too. So even if we don't have inventory available at that point, they wanted to place the order for those items, the out of stock items. Um, they wanted to have, um, a, wanted to maintain um, their internal users within the system. So buyers from their stores can order um, online. So multiple buyer option was another component that uh, we enabled that's part of the native um, M2. So we just um, implemented that module, that component. Um, we also did a product finder for them. So as long as they know the year, year make and model for the car, for their cars, they could um, um, find the right, uh, you know, the dash kits or adapters or speaker sizes for their cars. So, so these are some of the things uh, that uh, we enabled uh, when we launched the site. So, so one in three customers are now using the portal. So we are seeing a, a, a high a volume, of, a volume of orders coming in in the last two, three months um, since the launch. And so from the small of that customer group, um, almost uh, one third of customers are actually buying from us. Um, uh, two, we are seeing 2x uh, sales increase in the last six months. 20% um, of the actual, um, the sales is actually going through this portal now. Um, so I was actually checking the numbers yesterday. Um, last month was our best month uh, since launched the portal. And 87% of the current month sales is actually achieved. Um, in in the last in, in the last twelve days, um, um, so we wanted to put the power. So how are you know like we wanted to put the power back to power back to the sales team. You know when when it comes to managing the business, we wanted to you know we wanted to make sure the 
the sales team is fully equipped with all the tools that they need needed to have, all the training that they needed to have to manage their business. Um, so, a part of the a part of the tools we implement in Magento BI. So, we designed the dashboard, um, the B two B dashboard, where they can see the the, the latest latest data as of last night, um, uh, and see who is buying, what kind of products the customers are buying how often they are buying. So that's part of the, part of the you know, strategy and um, you know, the, the users from the sales team, the, the whole users from the sales team is actually leveraging that tool. So we wanted to, we, wanted, we, we are running two different promotions on the site. Um, we trained our internal users um, to manage the promotion, change content, change percentages, um, the discount percentages, by themselves without even talking to somebody in IT or any, um, any other department. Um, so we do have a digital asset management system in place um, with almost 50,000 digital assets where, you know, they're ranging from uh, product shots, lifestyle shots, um, and then videos and whatnot. Um, so they do have that uh, tool available in front of them so they can change home banner, homepage banners and site content on the fly, uh, working with the marketing or marketing team so they could do all these things without uh, IT's help. So we gave them option to change catalog, add products, add remove feature products. We also built a resource center uh, with video guides so they can watch videos. If you, are, you have a new user, a new buyer in your um, uh, uh, store, you could pretty much see the resource center, watch the video guides. These are like one, two minute videos that they can watch, um, uh, you know, to do that uh, job, that, that, that function. Um, some of the other benefits that we are seeing with the site, um, like I said, in the beginning, um, we were getting all the POs through emails and, and phone calls. Uh, sometimes these orders are like almost um, uh, anywhere from 20 lines to 100 plus lines. So somebody has to manually enter these orders within uh, the ERP system. Uh, that takes a lot of time to do. And they also have to send a thank you note to the customer. If they have an out of stock, stock situation, they have to mention that to the customers, email that to the customer. And once the shipment is done, um, we also have to send shipment notification to the customers. Um, but what we are seeing, these processes, are, everything that we had just talked about was automated um, and the process becomes more efficient now with the B2B portal. So we built a, a integration with our backend ERP system. So, uh, you know, with, the, with, with that ERP integration, the, there is less um, um, manual efforts, uh, which um, awards like, you know, a lot of uh, manual errors that we used to see before. Um, looking at the data that, uh, that uh, the, the order details that are coming in, uh, what we are seeing is like, you know, the customers are like buying on weekends at their convenience and even after hours. Like, so they have this 24, 24 seven purchasing uh, that they, 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 they have. Um, we do have um, um, real time information coming from uh, the ERP system. So when it comes to pricing or inventory, they do see the real-time information there. So it's kind of a self-service and self-management. They can create their own, um, um, you know, like a requisition list. They can maintain their own company structure. So it's kind of a personalized um, uh, customer experience that we are providing. So speaking with um, uh, so here is a diagram that I just want a high level uh, diagram that I just wanted to show how the uh, how the data is actually flowing in between these two different systems. Uh, so we have orders coming in from um, uh, Magento e-commerce and going to the ERP system on a frequent basis, like every 30 minutes. And then we do have inventory feed coming back uh, to e-commerce on a regular basis, uh, multiple times every day. Um, and then we, once the shipment is done at the end of the day, um, we send the ship, shipment details back to e-commerce that will then trigger the shipment notification to the end customers. Um, and the pricing, of course, the pricing information also goes to uh, the e-commerce side from, from ERP. 
uh, speaking with our uh, internal sales team and um, checking with our customer. These, these are the, the feedback that we receive. Uh, they have nothing but positive feedback from our, uh, our customers. Uh, they are pleased with the, with the experience so far. Um, and at this point, I just wanted to take a moment to talk about uh, our engagement with uh, DC Cap. Um, so we are using them for QA and compliance. Um, they, 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 they're doing an amazing job with the QA process. They're helping with uh, QA procedures. Um, identifying bugs and uh, issues with the site. Um, they are then documenting, I mean, good documentation uh, from them um, and then coordinating with our internal and external dev teams to iron out those issues. Um, so with that um, store that we built, um, right now we are at actually building another, another B2B site uh, for the rest of our customers with a different branding experience. Um, so we are launching this site with one customer who has about uh, 400 plus stores. Um, so uh, we will be, we are hoping that from the experience that we, we received so far from the, the other customer group, we are hoping that we are confident that, you know, this site is going to be even better and, um, um, you know, perform uh, better and we'll have another success story uh, with that site. With that, um, I'll pass the, the presentation back to Catherine. Thank you. Great to hear your presentation and very interesting to know how your journey has been and what you've learned along the way. It sounds like you've had some great successes as you continue the journey. Um, and it looks like we did have a question come in um, in the chat. Uh, Mark was asking, how are sales teams welcoming B2B initiatives? Are they threatened? If you could talk a little no, bit more about it, that. No, this is actually um, uh, a, a great vehicle for them to leverage the use. You know, they can, um, they, they are actually, in fact, for the second store that, that we are building, it's a, there is a lot of push from the sales team that they wanted to have this, even the second store ready for them. So they're excited about this, uh, the, the opportunity. That's great. That's great to hear. All right. Well, thank you again, um, Michael. It was a pleasure having you on for that presentation. Thank you. Um, all right. That's it for this month's e-session. Thanks so much for joining. And to our sponsor, Scotian.digital. And you can watch more at dccap.com forward slash events. And our next event will be on May 11th, the DCCAP e-summit. So be sure to watch out for that. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can watch all our videos. Have a great day, everyone.